Hey, what's good? It's Cadillac Tracks. I just want to go back over my new custom MK3 template. I wanted to show y'all some features that it does and uh, some of the using it on Fruity Loops and some of the things that you can do with it. Uh, it looks like this right here. I went ahead and um, it's got some features that I didn't go over in the last video that weren't available. Some new things that I've added and that's what I'm doing. I'm actually adding stuff to it. If you do purchase it, you're going to get the new add-ons as they become available. But uh, I went ahead and I added a pattern button, a dedicated pattern button, you know, on the machine MK3 already pattern button. And now uh, that's just so that we can switch on and off pattern mode. You know, that's something a lot of y'all do. I don't really do that a lot, but when I first started making beats, I used to always switch from pattern to song mode. I would pattern something out right here, and I need to go to song mode real quick because I'd also have something in the song mode. So I went ahead and I did that. I went ahead and I uh, made the dedicated button for pattern. It's right there. It'll switch between pattern and song mode quickly. Also added a button for step, which is step mode. I know uh, a lot of beat makers are actually using step mode because they don't actually, uh, you know, they don't really use the piano roll and they don't play the instrument. They just lay down melodies in the step sequencer and they play them. But um, if you're somebody like that or you're somebody that's familiar with the step edit mode, there's a button right here on my template step. It'll turn on the step edit mode and turn it off for you real quick. Um, let's see here. Um, I added a few functions right here on the screen, as you can see. Uh, before we had the jog function, but I now have a patterns function. You can see it right there, patterns. And when I hit patterns, I'm just going to twist it and you can't see my hand, but you can see the patterns moving up and down very quickly. And I'm not using a mouse, I'm actually using a knob. So we have a patterns knob, which is dedicated for patterns. And then I also have a swing knob. And uh, the swing knob, it's, it's, I don't really use swing a lot, but uh, you know, I actually just went online today and I was watching a couple of videos about ways swing can really, really help you out and uh, you know improve your drums. But I did make a swing knob. It's right here next to the patterns knob. It's the swing knob. And uh, you can use that to control the swing right there. And um, as you know, when you do the swing, you know, everybody knows. I didn't know for a long time that swing affects every sound in the project, every single one. If you don't want it to affect it, you got to go right here to this menu and turn the swing down. And it won't affect it. Uh, just a quick tip. I also made a button right here, blend record. And that's uh, the function up there at the top, you know, blend record. Whenever you're recording and you want the notes to blend over, I usually keep this one on arm to the three, two, one. This is one you can't turn on with any function. It has to be done by mouse, actually. I went ahead and I set a button for the blend record so we can turn the blend record on and off. It's good if we make a pattern and we want to record over it quickly. We can just hit right here, just tap it, and it'll open up blend record. And, uh, so you have the pattern mode button, you have the step sequencer button, and you also have the blend record button that I went ahead and I added along with this patterns button right here where I can actually scroll through different patterns quickly. So if I had different notes here, you could scroll through the different patterns very quickly. That's real nice when you want to get to a, a, another pattern quickly. But um, I'm going to go over real quickly some of the things that we didn't talk about in the last video. And um, I know I showed y'all the jog wheel, the dedicated jog wheel, but the jog wheel's function, it, it's, so, it's so crazy because it can do so much. I'm just going to show you with the jog wheel, like, I can open up the mixer and I can, um, I can affect or I can add or change plugins. I can even change presets sometimes with, the, with just the jog wheel. I'm going to show you that real quick. So with the jog wheel... One thing I can do is I can uh, I can always hit my mixer button, my dedicated mixer button. I can open up the mixer. Once the mixer selects, I can actually use the jog wheel like so. And I can go through channels. So I'm going to go through these channels here. And I can go to a channel that has some effects on it like this one right here. And once I get to that channel, I can hit my dedicated channel effects button. As you recall, it's this one right here. Um, it looks like you can't really see it when it's lit up like that. Channel effects. And also the plug-in instance button. I, just, I went over that in the first video. But when I do that, it's going to load up my plugins that are on that channel, okay? So when I push that button on that channel, I'm just go ahead and go back over it. I loaded the mixer up. I scrolled to it real quick with the little thing. 
and I hit the button for the effects, which is going to open up all the effects. There's about three of them over there. So I push the button and it starts to open them up and you can see that they're opened up. And uh, once they're opened up, remember I have an extra menu button function. So you can always push an extra menu on a plugin or if you have a plugin available. Like so, you could push the extra menu button. And once the extra menu button pops up, you know, you get options like replace. So I can use the knob again and I could go over, you know, right here to replace. And now I could replace this VST plugin with another one, any one. And I'm scrolling over left and right, up and down quickly with my knob right now. I'm just going to go to none because I didn't want to, well, I just replaced it with none. So you can open and replace plugins that way. Another thing you can do, if it's a Fruity Loops plugin, I could go down here to presets. And I could go over and I could go through the presets that are available on it. If it's a Fruity Loops plugin, it would have lots of presets. If it's something like um, a custom plugin, you usually have to go inside the VST to change the sound. So you really couldn't do this unless you set yourself up something. But it's a real good way to um, to get to it. Um, I know uh, one of my one of the viewers on YouTube asked me, does it have a button where I could um, disable all the plugins that aren't being used? Well, no, it doesn't because. I mean, you couldn't even do that in the first place unless you manually went to Smart Disable, which would disable all plugins not being used, or you, you know, manually turned them on or off. And uh, that's what you can do with this menu. You know, with this menu right here, as you can see, Smart Disable. So I could open this menu and I could go down and I could uh, Smart Disable this plugin if I if I wasn't using it or or to say so. And um, that's just one thing you can do with the knob. Um, let me see. I wrote down here another thing. And um, also, I should, um, this is another thing that I, I noticed earlier. If I'm in this screen right here, right now the channel rack is selected, right? If I open the mixer and uh, I had a plug-in selected, let's say I didn't have the mixer open in the background. <clears throat> What's selected now is the plugin. So if I have the plugin selected and I hit the the extra menus button let me just see if I can get this right for you. There it is. If if I have Fruity Loops selected, meaning I'm not selecting any plugin but I'm selecting Fruity Loops and I hit the button, the extra menu button, it brings up the, the file extra menu button. So you could quickly get to this file extra menu. And then if I wanted, I could use my scroller thing and I could open up something or I could go like, you know, go into stuff. But, uh, <clears throat> oh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. With the uh, wheel going left and right, I'm actually going through all my option menus right now. And like I said, man, it's just amazing what this wheel can do sometimes I'll be like crazy so with nothing selected and I hit the extra menu I get up into here from there we can start using the wheel left and right I can get to all the other functions up here um, that's something I didn't know but um, just like I said the wheel it's so it's so good if I'm in the playlist mode and I have some stuff going on right here or if I had it sequenced out I can use the wheel and uh, it'll help me to jog through the playlist like so. So that's the wheel in the playlist mode. It can help you in a lot of ways. If I have the, the channel rack selected, I can use the wheel to select a different a different icon. Um, so you can easily open and you know and close windows with the with the jog wheel. Like I was saying, with the mixer, I could um, let's say I had a. I'm just gonna open up a plug-in right here with the mouse. I'm going to open up the parametric EQ, and I was doing this earlier, but let's say I was in a project and I pushed my dedicated mixer button, and then I went over to the channel that had that parametric EQ, and I pushed the channel effects button and I brought it up like so. From here I could hit the extra menu button, and uh, the extra menu button, it pops up wherever the mouse is, so if the mouse was like right here, it's going to pop up right here. I hit the extra menu button and it's going to open up the extra menu button for the parametric EQ meaning that I can go down with my knob and I can go to presets and now I can get into my presets for the parametric EQ and I can push down on the knob and it's going to open up the preset 
So I thought that was pretty cool. I'm changing, I'm opening plugins and closing plugins, and I'm changing presets all with the dedicated knob to the mixer. And uh, you know, from there, you know, if I I could just push exit window, I could close my windows, and I could go back to something else. You know, I go back into the, you know, <clears throat> it's a good template that I made right here. And uh, all right, I think that's just about it. Um, So that's it, man. These are the new functions that I added. I added the blend record button, the swing button, a pattern selector button. I added a pattern and song mode button. Um, another thing I did is I added um, a third page. You see, we have page one. We also have page two, which um, I showed you in the last video, links up to tracks to solo them out and control the volume. But now I added a page three, which, which I should have put on there. And I went ahead and put a page three on there for y'all page three just so that you could link up these right here these knobs meaning the volume knobs up here and these knobs up into any plug-in you know for example if I had um, if I if I was using and I had the mixer open and um, let's say I had this plug-in open or whatever <clears throat> like the parametric EQ it really doesn't matter which one I have open like let's say I had this plug-in open right here and uh, with the third template, you know, with page three, I can go to page three and I can link up any parameter to these knobs, you know, and you can do that easily inside of Fruity Loops just by, I can move a knob, you know, so I'm going to move this knob, then I'm going to go up here to tools, and I'm going to go to uh, last tweaked, link to controller, and it's going to go ahead and link that knob quickly to the machine. So it's a good way to link knobs up for plugins, for specific plugins. That's a real easy way. Like I said, I'm just going to tools and I'm going to last tweet. And then I'm going to link controller and I'm linking these. So you can see right here I got two different things linked to two different, you know, plugins on machine. This is on page three. And uh when I save this project and I open this project again, it's always gonna be linked up to control that specific effect right there with this specific knob. And you know you got eight knobs. You got eight buttons on and off that you might uh, have a plug and go on or off or so, say so. So that's a good way to link stuff up. I just wanted to go over some of the some of the things that the template can do that I didn't really talk about last time. And uh, it's mostly about the jog wheel. The jog wheel can do a lot. It can open up windows. It can close windows. It can open up VSTs. Um, matter of fact, I didn't really show you all that. That that it, it does actually close windows so, um, like right now I have this um, effect when I push down on the knob it's uh, maximizing windows so it's it's another it's a third way to maximize windows I have the exit windows knob already but it's a it's another way to exit windows anytime you push it down it's gonna exit or maximize the window that you're in so this is the Cadillac Strikes template I just want to show y'all some more stuff that it can do um, as I come across some new stuff and new features, I'll show y'all the templates available. It's only 20 bucks. It took me a long, long time to set it up. And when you set it up, if, if you try to set it up, you'll see why it takes so long. Because you have to um, customize everything. And then I have it, I have right now, it's like I showed y'all last time, I have it linked out for every key. So I have key of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so forth. And these settings have to correspond to every different page with every key. So it takes a long time to set up, and uh, you can save yourself a heartache. I also have the minor scale mapped out for you. So I just wanted to show you all some of the features, and uh, Cadillac Tracks 1.